the yeah. Yeah. The, the, the other thing that I noticed is uh, there hasn't been much said about the uh, the motor, the engine. Um, there, there was no chance of getting something that yeah. No, functioning. A, a, a Renault Renault V8 air cooled engines so are only in museums. Okay. Um, but the museum was most insistent that it, we had the most accurate replica engine we could get. And so uh, a friend of mine, uh, Brendan Dillon, uh, was tasked by the museum with recreating a Renault 70 uh, engine. And we, uh, I approached uh, the, the National Av Aviation Museum at Moorabbin and we managed to, to borrow some Renault components, right. the, uh, the uh, cylinder, right. basically top and bottom and uh, had access to the museum's Renault V8 exhibit, which was sitting there. So Brenda went down and measured, measured everything, and we recreated, we repatterned the whole thing, the, exter the exterior of it, uh, found out ways of doing the more complicated um, top of the, top of the, 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 the cylinder head. And yeah, yeah. And um, we came up with uh, a metal replica uh, reproduction Renault V8 that really does look the part. It does. You can look at the engine and, and you would not know that it, it would not run. Uh, well, let me tell you, it, it fooled me. You know, yeah. The last time I saw it, I thought, right. well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's an original. Yeah. yeah. So, and the museum was very, very clear. They were insistent that we, we did it up to that standard and we, we believe we, we gave them exactly what they wanted. Let's look at the details here. We've got, is this is a, for example, this is the Cochrane. Is it the, uh, Turnbuckle or uh, that is a cocker. Yes, I'm developing a range of turnbuckles. Uh, these the, the turnbuckles on the BE2 I used were, were conventional turnbuckles that you can import from uh, the United States. You have in your hand the, the, the W. Cochrane and Company turnbuckle barrel. Co Cochrane's were uh, steam engineers in the 19th century, and mm. it, it kind of has that sort of steam steam appear. The vernacular of it looks looks very steam orientated. It is, it is amazing. What I've done is actually I'll put a witness hole in here, yeah. so that we we know that the the, the strength is there. That these is are all amazing. these are all done under the experimental category. These are not authorised aircraft parts. Right. Okay. But uh, I can I can make design and make my own under the experimental category. Yeah. Yeah. For, frankly, a fraction of the cost that the cost to import them. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they will look the part. Yeah. So all these are, are within the one aircraft, or? Uh, no, they'll be they'll be used on a, on a variety of aircraft right. that I'm planning to build. So so for example, there's a Martin and Hander sign I'm looking like looking at. Uh, we're getting on to our next sort of area, if you like, because yeah, yeah. following on from from Brendan's work with the Renault. And my work with the B, the BE2 airframe. Uh, Brendan got interested in the Jap, the, the John Presswich series of engine, right. aero engines, starting yeah. in about 1908. The Jap V4 right. and V8. Yeah, yeah. And he has started work on um, developing uh, reverse engineering, certainly a V4 to start with, and uh, uh, to see if we can actually do this. And it occurred to us that, that it would be good to build a series of air airframes that used the, the JAP series of aero engines, because there are many of them in Britain and right. one in Australia too. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And although you didn't have to, you've actually had these load tested. Yeah, yeah, well, you had, uh, yeah I felt I had to, because even though I'm working under experimental, they've got to work. Yeah. And, and they meet all the tensile requirements for well, certainly, certainly for the fifteen hundred weight category, because um, I've done extensive testing, and, and, and this particular version that is all our own work, and and um, uh, that beats the American standard by about four hundred pounds, right. which might be a bit of overkill, but they work. Yeah, yeah. So I'm confident that they're they're right for the task. Now going back to the B two A. Um Tell us about the uh, the, the fin right there behind oh, us. Oh, this, this is a, uh, excuse the chair, chair scraping. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's a BE2 rudder. I built three simply because I wasn't sure how good good my work was going to be and I'd, I'd be able to improve each time, but they all turned out to yeah. be reasonably well. That's, that's yeah. completely handmade. Yeah. Um, it's uh, covered exactly as it should have been. It has frayed tape for finishing tape. <laughs> Uh, and the plan for some sort of collection or a little museum I've got planned for the future of, if, 
oh, yeah. at some point um, is is to have uh, RAFB two written on the on sign written on on both sides of it. Yeah, um, because uh, there's a, fa- a famous photograph of of Geoffrey de Havilland sitting in what was BE two. Yeah, they built BE one. That was the pioneer. It was the most modern aircraft in the world at the time, and in the end of, the, of the, in 1911. Yeah, yeah. And the next aircraft they built like that one, they called the E2 because it was the second one. Yeah, yeah. It was only later that the type became standardised to be E2 A B C D. Right. Yeah. yeah. And but they all used this rudder. Yeah. So how long did it actually take you all up to, to build the beat? Uh, from light bulb moment to um, wheeling it into position on the hangar floor, uh, seven years. Seven years. On and off, yeah. So I, I guess there would have been four, four years of solid building. Yeah. So when components were completed, like the fuselage, undercarriage and the empennage, we the museum came and took that down to Point Cook for their 2012 pageant. Right. And then I started on the wings, and they were taken down in the following year, 2013. Right. Uh, yeah. So it was all very organised. Yeah. They had great support from the museum. Great support. Yeah. They, they really bent over backwards, and, and the friends yeah. too. Yeah. That's great. Uh, we had, uh, you know, often a, like a dozen people working on this thing at the end, yeah. meeting that deadline. You know, me running around organising things and then doing the hand sewing on the yeah. wings or the nailing it. Because yeah. these, those wings, it's the, the fabric is actually also nailed on with, with upholstery tacks. Yes. Is that right? If, uh, well, the, the, the National Aviation Museum at, at Moorabbin has a pair of original B2 wings. Oh wow! And you can so you can so I managed to get uh, good access to those. Oh, wow. well, they were very kind to me, and yeah. uh, so I could actually inspect all of the, these wings and, and have a look at them. Oh wow! It's just whether well, they, I would say that those wings are amongst the most significant aviation artifacts, not only in this country because they would in this country I believe they are the most significant aviation artifacts. Uh, in existence, but certainly around the world, there are no, there are no really any oh, other. How beautiful. Uh,